So we're going to be building a MIDI guitar and we're going to be modeling it after the Steinberger. This is going to be the Strat style body Steinberger. And I feel like as far as headless guitars goes, there are a lot of headless guitars on the market these days that are very derivative of the Strandberg style shape. Looking towards the past at the older Steinbergers, these are still very iconic headless guitars, but less derivative and less Strandbergy. So I wanted to design one based around this, but I wanted to do it as a neck through. We're going to just get three pieces of wood, a centerpiece and some wings, laminate them together, and then machine this on the CNC. This just happens to be the perfect dimensions um, to fit on my actual CNC table, so I can machine this whole thing in one go. And what's important here is the transition between that neck and the body. So this is the design that I landed on. Now, I was inspired by the Kiesel Vader. The Kiesel Vader is a guitar by Kiesel, and it's heavily influenced by the Steinbergers. The horns are a little different, but for the most part, it is a Steinberger style shape. Now, a lot of guys who are building neck throughs tend to focus on this area only, which is the transition of the center stock of the neck into the body. But what makes this guitar cool is this section here, which are these wing transitions. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make some wing transitions where the transition from the neck extends outward into the actual wing section of the body and doesn't just focus on the center stock. A more elegant version of this is the Strandberg Pliny model. This one also is a neck through, but again, you can see these beautiful, amazing transitions in the wings. The Strandberg is able to get this elegance from this curve right here. And that comes from the very short horn and the extended longhorn. Just beautiful, elegant curve. If you take a look at the Vader, the Vader has a straight line. And then it just quickly ramps up. It quickly ramps up there to the horns. But for the most part, it's a straight line. Now, on mine, I have a U-shape. And that is just the nature of the Steinberger horn system. Can't really escape it. But I like it. Now, the Kiesel Vader is cool, but if you look at it from another angle, you can see there's quite a bit of meat in this area. So you can see the transition from the neck starts somewhere around here and then goes this way. And this is probably around the 17th or 18th fret. And all this meat here is unnecessary. I wanted a quicker transition, so on mine I start somewhere around the 19th fret. And this gives me a really steep transition into the body, which also gives me huge amounts of access in the upper frets, and I don't need any of that meat. Now, the Pliny model also does something really interesting. It hogs out all this section here. There's really no wood here. It's super thin. And that's super useful, because if you think about it, there's really no need for any of that extra wood there. So my steep version here actually works in terms of being all access. So I was literally Googling the word neck through. Just wanted to find out if it was hyphenated or not. And came across this photo here. And this is an Ibanez. And it basically is using the same design that I came up with. Well, I didn't come up with it, but you get it. It's the same concept and the same strategy for building the transition, which is you have this kind of U-shaped line here that's connecting the horns, and then you have the single loft that just connects the neck to the body at around somewhere between the 17th and 19th fret. This one probably is like 18 or 17. You can see it's starting about right here. But that's basically the same construction method, or at least the same strategy for designing it in CAD. So the other thing that I want to show you was this style here is what I was trying to avoid. And this is what most builders do. They focus on the center stock and build the transition. And then the contour just bangs up next to it, right? Without any kind of like real transition between the two pieces, the wing and the center stock. So this is what I was trying to avoid. Um, I didn't want to build anything like that. I wanted to make sure to kind of keep it in uh, this style here. So just to give you some different views. I've tried doing quite a few 
bits of analysis on this to see if there's any weird geometry and I just can't see anything wrong with it. It looks pretty good. I've tried the curvature analysis and the zebra analysis and I just don't understand what I'm seeing. I tried using different appearances and materials, gold, brass, and the best thing is just to come into render view with a really good environment and try to take a peek to see if there's any kind of weirdness happening. And there isn't. So let's see how we built this. All right, so I'm just gonna roll the timeline here. And I'll show you my surface cuts. Cool. So essentially what I'm doing is creating a sketch on this face here, which is the end of the loft of the neck. So my neck right now doesn't have a headstock or transition to a headstock, and it ends at the 19th fret. And what we want to do is we want to create cuts onto this surface here. And so what I've done is I've created a sketch, and obviously you can modify what the curve looks like and how long it is, etc., etc. Now, these lines here are for making cuts into the neck, but we'll get to that in a bit. So what I'm going to do is just make the first cut into the surface. There it is. You can see it's just a mirror of that. And then I'll make a surface cut on the other side. There you go. So when we have these, we now have access to delete those faces. And we'll just do that. Okay, what we're left with is a big gaping hole in the body. And that's what we want. Because when we loft, we're going to be lofting this profile with this profile here. Okay? And there's just one more thing I need to do. I need to delete this face. We're essentially just making this hollow. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is build our curves. Now, these curves are just splines. So I create a sketch onto this face here, which is the upper portion of the neck profile. And they're just two splines connected to the points here at the big gaping hole and the corners of the neck profile. So you can see it's just a spline where we have some tangency between the neck lines and the actual spline. And you can do the same thing here if you want to, although it's not necessary. For the most part, these curves align with the actual Steinberger body shape. And then that brings us to the lofting. So here's the first loft. Now, I don't understand the actual parameters of the loft. I had to hop on Austin's Discord and a lot of folks there helped me understand what's going on here, but I still don't really understand it. But these are the parameters that I landed on that works and that's really all that matters it gets you to where you need to go quickly there's not really a whole lot of going on here I basically take that loft and I stitch it and we have to create some patches for the top these are not special they're just two patches and a loft and then we just stitch the whole thing together so there you go really quick minimal CAD work to get some pretty cool results and again, it gets us to this point where we can machine it. And then once it's been machined, we can hit it with as much sandpaper as we want. So I could sand that hard edge like the Kiesel Vader, or I can keep it nice and crisp like the Plenty model, or just do something in between. But in any case, what I plan on doing is redoing that transition to get rid of this meat here. All this meat is unnecessary. So that's where those other lines came in for the surface cuts. So these lines here actually create surface cuts on the neck. And it gives me two additional points. And what I can do is put another line here, which gives me another point. And I can start to build these lofts piece by piece and really kind of explore some of the options to get to me a point that's like this. That's what I plan on doing. But for the most part, I think this gets people started 
with neck through design transitions. Thanks for watching and take it easy.